What's up my friends, I'm US Army veteran Christopher Chaos. Now, this video isn't necessarily for those of you that are learning about the Army, trying to get more educated about the Army, but more dedicated for the tons of people that I get that reach out to me about wanting to know if the person they are talking to on the internet is possibly a scammer. I have done a couple of videos on this specific topic, right? To help people kind of be aware about this is a thing, right? Whether you are someone on the civilian side looking to get involved with a relationship with someone in the military or even on the military side to be cautious of people stealing your photos or whatever to use them in these scams. Because of those videos, I get a lot of people to reach out to me wanting to know, hey, in here's my specific situation, is this a scammer or not? So this video is dedicated to help those individuals, but if you're not in that type of situation, maybe you just wanna be educated, right? You wanna know, maybe you wanna help out your friends, maybe your friends come to you with some kind of story, then maybe you can help them out. So regardless of if you're someone who is searching for someone on the internet for a relationship or not, or maybe you have some friends that do this and maybe you can help them identify that, hey, you're probably talking to a scammer and you can stop them from you know, sending them money and whatever else and causing them some grief and pain. So let's get into it and let's start off with some things as far as like kind of like a checklist, all right? I'm gonna list off some different things and explain a little bit about them. And I want you to, you know, think about it. You know, is, is this something that the individual you are talking to has said to you? The first and usually easiest way to tell if this person is a scammer is have they asked you for money or gift cards? I don't care what the reason is, it does not matter. I don't care if it's because they say they need food, they need money to get home, they need money for, to get a, a replacement from their deployment, which is not a thing, and whatever, right? Or they need gift cards for being able to talk to you or whatever, it does not matter. That is a scammer or just not someone you should be talking to. Because either they're trying to get that money or that gift card from you to scam you and get that for their profit, or maybe they are a real soldier, very unlikely, but if they are a real soldier and they're looking to get you to send them gift cards or money or whatever for whatever reason they have, then that's not someone you probably should be involved with in the first place. There is no good reason why someone who has met you on the internet, you're a complete stranger, they're a complete stranger, you met them on the internet and you're asking for money. There's no good intention with that. That should only be a thing for someone you trust, someone you know from the physical world, someone who you're related to, someone you have actually hung out with, not someone you just met on the internet. I don't even care if this is someone you've been talking on the internet for a year or two years or whatever, no. If you don't actually physically know that person, that is not someone that should be asking you for money or someone you should be sending them money, even in the form of gift cards. I see all these crazy stories of people saying that, oh, he needs money for food. No, soldiers are well fed. Oh, he's locked out of his bank account. No, they're gonna fix that pretty quickly. Oh, he needs money to be able to get home. Well, there's programs to help people get home. They're not gonna ask complete strangers for that. Oh, he needs to pay for a replacement. That's not how that works. You're not gonna have to pay for a replacement. Oh, they need this fiance fee and have to fill out this crazy form that has an American flag for a background. No, none of the forms have any kind of backgrounds to them. They're very basic and very generic and you don't require any kind of fee that some complete stranger on the internet needs to pay for the soldier to do this, for them to get engaged. And you shouldn't be getting engaged to someone you only know from the internet. So that is the really the big main one. There's some more that we're gonna dive into though here. The next common one that I see is that they want to send you a package. Maybe they've got a bunch of money in it, something really valuable, something that they need to you know, get out of country and they're gonna send it to you and need you to hold on to it. As what happens in this situation is one, it's bad that they get your physical address, but is what they do is they send out this you know, fake package. They send out a package. They don't really send anything out, but they say they did. And then after maybe a few days or whatever, they then contact you and say, hey, it got stuck in customs. Or they come up with some fake email address that sends you a message saying that the package that you're supposed to receive has been stuck in customs. And now you have to pay this fee to get it out. And then that person's claiming, oh, please just pay that fee. The, the stuff that's in there is worth way more than that anyways. And I'll pay you back once, once you know you get the package. Well, here's the thing. If there's some kind of package that for whatever reason gets stuck at customs or something like that, they're not gonna make you pay to get it out. They're probably just gonna send it back to the sender and be like, no, you need to fix this if you want this to go through. But even if there is a situation where, you know, that is the thing, where they are gonna want money from that, you you shouldn't be paying that money, all right? You don't know this person. You're not gonna accept some package that didn't make it through customs, you know, you don't know what the hell is in this package from a complete stranger. So that's usually the common kind of scam with that. They send the package, it gets stuck somewhere, and now you have to pay some kind of fee to get it out of that place and get it to you, and then they claim they're gonna pay you back. 
well, they're not going to pay you back. They're just going to keep that money. And sometimes there ends up being more and more. Well, oh, I paid that fee, but now I got stuck somewhere else or something else happened. I've seen that in a case as well. Another thing that's not necessarily a giveaway that they're a scammer, but something to be cautious of is if they claim to be deployed. Like I said, that alone is not like, you know, a, hey, this must be a scammer because they claim to be deployed and that's not a real thing. No, it's just that usually when soldiers are deployed, when they do have some free time, especially if it's to a combat zone, they're going to want to use that free time to talk to their friends and their family. They don't usually, you know, make a lot of time to be able to reach out to random internet people to try to make relationships. Not impossible. That's definitely possible, but it's not going to be as common. So like I said, not an immediate, oh, this person's a scammer, but definitely something to get that radar going, get that alertness kind of going on to make sure you're paying attention to everything else that they're talking about and everything else that they're trying to tell you. Now, kind of tying into that last one a little bit is, does this person live where you're from or where you're living or are they normally stationed in the place where you're currently living? Because here's the thing, right? If a soldier wants to create some kind of online relationship to later, obviously build it into a physical relationship, they're probably going to search for people that are in their area, somewhere that they wanna live, somewhere that they are from, or somewhere that they currently live. So if a soldier is, let's say, deployed and their normal duty station is Fort Hood, Texas, well, they're probably gonna try to find someone in that Texas area, or at least Texas in general, to try to build a relationship with online. If they have that free time while they're deployed or whatever, they're probably gonna to look to that immediate area. It's gonna be very uncommon that they're gonna to look to some foreign country they don't plan to ever go to because what is their intention? Maybe, maybe they have the intention that they're just gonna to try to meet someone and you happen to be in that foreign country and then they're gonna to move to that country or they're gonna to try to get you to move to the United States, whatever the case is. But most commonly, they're gonna to wanna to try to look to find someone that's in their immediate area. That way, when they are going home on leave or they are done with that deployment, then they can meet this person in person and actually build a real relationship beyond the internet with them. So again, not an immediate red flag that this is definitely a scammer, but definitely something to, again, get your get your attention. Does this person you know, live in the same place where you live in or will they be living in that same area? If not, then definitely you know, start to question a lot of what they're saying and kind of be very cautious of everything they're talking about. Another common one for whatever reason these scammers want to you know, claim is that uh, they're in the special forces or Navy SEALs or some kind of special elite black ops kind of unit. If they're telling you that kind of stuff, that's definitely one to be highly cautious of. Again, not an immediate red flag, but definitely more cautious than some of those other ones I was talking about with being cautious like if they live in your area or they claim to be deployed. If they're claiming to be special forces, Navy SEALs, some kind of special operations or something like that, then that is a higher, you know, kind of level that you should be alert of, of like, why on earth is this person reaching out to some random person on the internet? Isn't that a little bit risky for them? It, it is, so it'd be very uncommon for them to do that. So that's definitely something to be cautious of. Along with that, I usually see people that, like, they've sent them their identification card, their military ID card, and on the ID card it says Special Forces or Navy SEALs. The ID card does not say that you're Special Forces, Navy SEALs, or Special Operations, or anything on your ID card. That's just not there. But that is also another one that if they go and they send you a copy of their ID card, that's probably a red flag. I mean, why, why on earth does a soldier gonna send some random stranger on the internet a copy of their ID card when that actually technically has like some personal information on it. There's a barcode on there. And if you had the proper technology, you could decipher that and get some personal information from that individual. But still, that's a very dangerous thing because you could be sending this person this ID card that could then make copies of it to use it for, you know, counterfeiting IDs or, or whatever they're trying to do with these IDs, that it's bad. So for one, soldiers should not be sending someone a copy of their ID card. And two, if someone sends you a copy of their ID card, that's a little bit suspicious. Maybe the soldier just doesn't know any better and he sent it to you for proof. Sure, maybe. But all of the ones I've ever seen are always like super fake and super horrible looking. You can always tell because a lot of things are like super clear, like they basically took a photo that was on the internet of an ID card, put their picture or put a picture over it and then changed certain portions of it. And then there's always like extra information like special forces or the rank is wrong or the photo is like some ridiculous photo that's not the photo that you end up getting taken when you go to the ID card place. So red flag if they send you a copy of their ID card. Another red flag definitely is if they can't video chat with you, all right? They sometimes claim that that's not allowed. It's not allowed for us to video chat with people because of security reasons. No, 
military usually encourages you to try to stay in contact with your family to keep your morale up, keep your, you know, happiness and all that kind of stuff, especially while deployed and everything like that. So they a lot of times have phone centers and places, you know, that if available that you can video chat with, you know, in a lot of locations, not everywhere, but a lot of times. And if you have other ways or other means to be able to contact your loved ones via the phone or video chatting, then they highly encourage that. There could be areas right, of where you couldn't video chat, but you're not gonna have that kind of technology in that area anyways. You know, an area that's secret, yeah. If you're inside of like a room that's like got secret information in there, of course you can't be video chatting inside of there. But when you're outside of that, you're, you're off work or you're kind of got some free time or whatever, you're away from that area, you're, you're free to video chat if you want to. And I'm not talking about, oh yeah, I video chatted with him. It came on for like three seconds, it was really dark. He said hello and then it cut off because he said he had poor connection. No, that's, that's not, that doesn't count. Is it possible they have poor connection? Sure, definitely. They definitely can have poor connection, especially on a combat deployment. But don't count that as like, yeah, he video chatted with me. If you can't clearly video chat with that person, you can clearly see their face and identify that yes, this is the person in the photos that, that has been sending me photos and everything like that. And you can't clearly, you know, actually hear them and have a conversation with them because that's also key, then this is definitely not something to trust. I've seen situations where they're like, yeah, either it's like a really quick one or it's really dark or it is the person and it's just like a video playing and that's all they did. They didn't actually get to have a conversation with them because that could be a thing as well. You need to be able to clearly see that person and have an actual conversation back and forth, ask them questions, they respond, conversation like you would with a real person on that video chat. Now, maybe you wanna know, well, how can I know if this person is real? Well, the main one is meet them in person, all right? That is the definitive answer to know this person is real, is meeting them in person. But that may be difficult depending on where you're at, where they're at, all that kind of stuff. So then the second option would be a very clear video chat with that person. Not like I said, any of the other ones I was talking about before. If it's very clear, you can see that person, you can have a conversation that's a good chance that that's a real person, but still be cautious because there could be situations where soldiers, real soldiers, or that real person is faking to be a soldier still, but they look like the person in the photos because they've been really elaborate with faking their photos is still trying to scam you. So you still have to be cautious of that. You can you know, at least know that the person in the photo is, is the same person you're talking to possibly from a clear video chat, but still, if they want you to send money it doesn't matter if you're like, okay, yes, this is a real soldier, but they need money to get home. Well, that's probably still for malicious reasons. So still apply those first things I saw, but definitely meeting someone in person and video chatting with someone clearly can be good indications that it's at least not probably the fake person that's not even really the person in the photos and it's a scammer or whatever, but still apply those other things and don't send random people money. Here are some also key things that you need to be aware of. Do not give out your physical address. That goes back to the one with the packaging, right? But they can use this for leverage later on. Along with that is, I've seen people where they say that they've sent them intimate photos, nude photos, both men and women, right? And now if they don't send them the money, they're gonna send these photos to my friends. Don't give them that stuff in the first place. You should not be giving random people on the internet nude photos of you or your physical address if you don't know them even if you know them, that's still pretty risky as well, but definitely if there's just someone you know from the internet, don't do this because you're giving them leverage so that if they come into a situation where you're not budging and you're not gonna send them money, you're not gonna send them these gift cards, they have that now to be like, hey, well, you're not gonna send me this money? Then I'm gonna send this to all your friends on Facebook, all your friends on Instagram, whatever. I'm gonna send all these nude photos to them if you don't give me this money. Or they can even claim that, you know, hey, I have your physical address. I'm gonna send you a bomb or whatever crazy. They're probably not gonna go that extreme. I mean, it's possible, but it's probably not gonna really go that extreme because these are probably just people in some kind of call center somewhere in some foreign country, most likely, or maybe from their home or whatever that's scamming multiple people and they don't really have like terrorist access to be able to, you know, send explosives through the mail that's gonna get it through there undetected or something kind of crazy. But the nudes, yeah, they could easily send that to all your friends. So. Don't be giving out that kind of information or personal information or personal photos to those individuals they could possibly use against you in a situation where you're not gonna pay up. People commonly reach out to me saying that I think this person must be real because I do a reverse image search on the person and I don't find these photos anywhere. Well, that just means that those photos were private photos that that person possibly stole from the real person. So yeah, it's not gonna show up on a reverse image search if it was from a personal Facebook profile. Is what they commonly do is they either create you know, a profile of the opposite sex to 
to kind of attract that person to accepting their friend request, thinking, oh man, this hot person wants to be my friend. Cool, I'm gonna accept their friend request. Now they have access to all their personal pictures that they can steal and use them for these scams that aren't gonna show up in a reverse image search. Or the other things they do is that they find someone in their friends list and they steal some of their photos, make a fake profile, say that, hey, my old account got hacked. This is my new account, accept my friend request. And then now they get access to all those personal photos that they can use in scams. So just because you can't reverse image search their image does not mean that it's legit and it's real. It just means it came from a private account. Another thing to be aware of is like a legit government email address. Now, usually a soldier's government email address has like their last name and then dot their first name or their first name dot their last name, maybe the middle initial in there or something like that. And then it's at mail.mil. So it's got the dot mil extension on the very end. Not gonna be a Google email, a Yahoo email, none of that. Now that is also possibly a way you can verify that it's a legit soldier. Typically though, those email addresses are supposed to be used for official use only. So really you requesting them to send you an email from that one, I mean, they can definitely you know make a good argument saying that I'm not supposed to because it's supposed to be for official use only. So sure, that can't be a legitimate way to really identify that it's a real soldier. But if they're claiming that, hey, my leadership is going to send you an email to you know, get me out of this country or to send you the form for this fiance form or whatever, and it comes from a Google address, a Yahoo address or something like that, yeah, then that's definitely fake. So if their leadership for whatever reason was supposedly going to contact you in an official way, it would come from that .mil type of email address, not .com, not .org, none of that. A lot of times when I'm able to help out some people to tell them, yes, that sounds like that's a scammer, you should stop talking to them, they usually want me to find the real person. I don't have any kind of special way, and most people don't have some kind of special way to find that real person. You can do some investigative work, sure. I've done that a few times where I have looked at a picture of a soldier, seen their unit patch, figured out what unit they're from, and then from there found that unit's Facebook page and then dug through their photos a little bit and was able to manage, you know, maybe to find that soldier, maybe searching their name and then that unit sometimes popped up with some kind of article, you know, that soldier did something, you know, but if they didn't do anything special or they weren't captured in a photo from that unit's Facebook profile or something like that, and that soldier didn't also like, like the photo or comment on that photo, I have no special way of finding that. And even that still takes a lot of work. So I, I don't have time to dedicate myself to be a private investigator to find these soldiers. I don't have any kind of special database that I can find this person for you. There are a lot of soldiers out there in the world and that takes a lot of effort. I am pretty busy with just normal YouTube channel stuff as well as my day job, my family, all that kind of stuff. So I don't have any special way to find who the real person is. And even if I did, and we did find the person, you said that, hey, your photos are being used in a scam, there's not much they can do about it other than if they want to just stop posting photos on the internet, right? They can kind of report that stuff, but they're still very limited as far as what can be done about it. So there's not a whole lot of justice in today's society that you can do about these types of scams. There is ways that you can report that, but a lot of times with that information, all they're really using it for is to learn more about these scams to try to help educate people. It's not necessarily to go get justice. You probably want that, right? You wanna get justice for this person that maybe scammed you out of some money or whatever the case was. But currently, there's not really a good way to do that, right? Eventually, maybe that stuff will evolve and it'll get a lot better. But currently, you can report that stuff and it's really just used to kind of educate them and educate other people on these scams to try to prevent other people from becoming victims, but not really to get justice unless it was a serious crime that was committed somewhere in there. So there you go, not your normal army topic type of stuff that I create on the channel, but something that can be very helpful to someone who is in this situation. Also kind of provides me as a video that I can like shoot out to someone in an email if they, you know, asking me questions about a scammer and be like, hey, have you checked the box on all of this stuff that I talk about in this video? So still nonetheless, if you liked the video, you found it helpful in some way, hit that thumbs up. Check out some links down in the description for social media and much more. I'm Christopher Chaos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. See you.